Adaptive Combat Rifle. No, this isn't a Brandon Herrera gun meme review. This is actually talking about the ACR, the greatest rifle ever made that pretty much doesn't exist anymore. What happened to the ACR? Let's find out. Welcome back everybody, Clint here today with Classic Firearms, here to talk about, yeah, what I believe was a fantastic rifle and had a lot of potential, but just ultimately due to circumstance and timing, it, yeah, it just, it, it just failed ultimately. Is that because of the rifle or because of the manufacturers though? Let's talk about that a little bit, but before we roll into any of that, let's go ahead and bring up the beginnings of the adaptive combat rifle. In 2006, Magpul, yes, the Magpul, started to design another firearm. I say another firearm because at this point, they may have had some dealings with like that FDP or whatever it is, that little folding pistol light thing. We all remember seeing the SHOT Show footage and it was looked really, really cool. And then they're supposed to be partnering with, I think it was Zev to actually come out with it. But I don't know, I haven't really heard much about it either. Maybe it's just Magpul guns and coming into fruition and staying around just doesn't really happen. Anyway, I don't know. So in 2007, Magpul released the, the Masada and not to be confused with like the IWI Masada or anything like that, no relation whatsoever, but the Magpul Masada was the short stroke piston driven modular 5.56 gun that had ambidextrous controls and had a lot of potential and a lot of promise for the future. However, Magpul, they're not a firearms company. They're not a firearms manufacturer. So what they needed was somebody to help with the manufacturing and production of the Masada. So they partnered with Remington and Bushmaster to make what they called the Adaptive Combat Rifle or the ACR. Now, with all that being said, you're probably wondering why two manufacturers? Well, Remington would handle the military and law enforcement side of things with the select fire version of the ACR and Bushmaster would handle all the civilian semi-auto sales, or I should say semi-auto manufacturing of their ACR. Okay, cool, fair enough. So. After it was released, or at least shown at SHOT Show in 2007, after much anticipation, it was finally released to the public in late 2010. And, well, people loved it. It was a cool gun. It was something unique, something different than what was already out there. And, yeah, it did pretty well initially, except for one really big thing, the price. Magpul suggested the retail cost on the firearm be anywhere between $1,400 to $1,500. And once it actually hit the shelves, it was closer to $2,600 to $3,000. So thinking you're going to get this really cool, innovative, futuristic, modular rifle for $1,500 on the high end is actually coming out for double that at closer to $3,000. So strike one there if you ask me. Strike two is soon after it was released, there was also a recall because some of us might find this to be a fun little moment of time. Uh, when the gun would actually be fired, you'd be thinking you're shooting semi-auto and then all of a sudden it would go into full auto. Well, that's a spicy time. And even though a lot of us would probably appreciate it, the ATF, not so much. And they had to issue that recall to fix the guns. Pretty much strike two. And then the third strike came when the United States Army was looking at while well, replacing the M4 M16. Again, I mean, Matt already talked about the ACR program, not to be confused with the ACR that I'm talking about, by the way, a couple months ago. So if you're gonna go see those weird, funky looking guns, go check that video out. But in this case, there also wasn't a winner in the 2010, 2013 trials to replace the M4 because the army just said no probably due to logistics all these different armories and different units already having the m4 m16 and everything they need for that including components parts training things like that okay logistically it just didn't make sense to replace it at that point in time maybe if we were facing an adversary where the 556 cartridge or the m4 and m16 truly is becoming obsolete and we're finding it to actually become a very cumbersome weapon system to work with in a really harsh environment, which sometimes we are, but 
for the most part, it works very, very well. So it's not that bad. That was one of the promises of the ACR was that that was going to be a super reliable system, especially with the adjustable ga adjustable gas system to where you could, you know, tune it up if it needed to be shot under much more inclement environments or if it was super dirty or something like that. Also, it being a short, uh, short stroke piston driven design would shoot cleaner than a DI gun like the M4 M16. So, okay. However, the United States Army didn't make a choice. They said, ah, thanks for nothing. Uh, we don't want any of your guns. So all these manufacturers that put in different, well, firearms or weapons to be selected or to compete, none of them won. So that was yet a, another failing that the ACR ran into, unfortunately. So I guess the fourth strike, because they just keep coming, the poor ACR, is in 2020, Freedom Group, well, who falls under, who owns Bushmaster and Remington, ultimately declared bankruptcy. So now the ACR program, goodbye, pretty much something to be featured on Forgotten Weapons and is now ultimately a collector's piece. Unless you're Franklin Armory, because they immediately bought Bushmaster and I don't want to say they promised, but they did say that they would revive the ACR. And if you ask me, if, if Franklin Armory keeps to their promise, again, I don't think they actually promised, keeps to their word, and let's say they do revive the ACR, but let's say they actually bring it back, because you can find the ACR on the web, on, on the internet now, you know, at a much more reasonable cost than what it used to be, because quite frankly, it doesn't have the aftermarket support, doesn't have all of the cool conversion kits that were promised. I mean, conversion kits did come out, Strike 5, except eight years after it was released and in 6.8 SPC and 450 Bushmaster. To be quite frank, nobody freaking wanted that. Everybody wanted a shorty 300 blackout and different barrel lengths of 5.56. Kind of like what they promised the United States Army, having the CQB model at 10.3 inches. Uh, they had the 14.5 carbine model. They also had the 18 inch DMR model. Oh, and they also promised it being able to shoot 762 by 39 out of an AK-47 magazine just by switching the lower receiver, which is not the serialized part of the gun. So. It's just an accessory, a affordable polymer piece to the gun that also had an integrated grip. So if you wanted to switch the grip out, it's not like it takes AR grip, so you'd have to switch the whole lower receiver out. Again, not a big deal, but modularity, yes. So again, nobody saw any of the stuff that, well, the consumers actually wanted. All we saw were higher prices and also reliability issues coming out of the New York manufacturer. There was uh, two different models produced obviously talking about Remington and Bushmaster, but on Bushmaster's end, there was something coming out of Maine, Wyndham, Maine, which was one of the original productions, which apparently did really, really well. And then if you're getting one of the ones coming out of New York, it had some issues and there were a lot of reliability factors that were at play that didn't bode well for the ACR either. However, going back to Franklin Armory, Franklin Armory, who we all know and love because they bring us the binary triggers, which are a lot of freaking fun, if they can actually keep to Magpul's original suggested retail price of anywhere between 1500, 14 to 1500, I'd even say $2,000 is acceptable if they really actually improved the ACR. Still let it be that short stroke design, but also keeping that QD barrel design, which is really, really unique because all it is, is you remove the rail, again, completely toolless, you remove the lower section of the rail and it has this little Piece, this handle that actually clicks, connects to the barrel, you rotate that and then the barrel pops out. It's a really cool design and allows you to, well, do different barrel calibers or uh, barrel lengths and different also calibers. Again, just like that. Then you switch out the receiver to accept whatever magazine you need it to do if it needs to even have that done. But ultimately the barrel and the bolt face and you're ready to rock and roll. Okay, cool. If Franklin Armory can do that, and also make the lower receiver take AR grips because let's be real, who, I mean, you know what I mean? <laughs> so I feel like there's still potential for the ACR to be revived, but at this point, is it even worth it? Because there's so many different guns on the, on the market now that pretty much do the exact same thing this gun does. But I think honestly it would have a winning chance if it was the price point and if it came with the binary trigger. I mean. I'm just saying, all right? So let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Do you think the ACR was actually ever, if it wasn't for maybe, 
<laughs> financial issues. But if it was just based off the gun alone, do you guys think it had a chance of succeeding in the civilian market at least? Obviously in the military market, eh, not so much. But in the civilian market, I do believe it actually had a chance. Again, it's innovation, unique design, modularity, the conversion kits, if they actually ever came out in the time and what, they, what the people actually wanted, this gun had a lot of potential. Just mismanagement, misuse of funds, or I don't know, whatever. The gun just didn't succeed at the end of the day. But I hope it can be revived like Franklin Armory says. So I'll leave it off there, guys. I'll see you down in the comment section. ACR, good, bad, indifferent. Do you want to see it come back or do you think it should just stay in the history books as, as far as forgotten weapons go and anything else? I don't know. Let me, get, let me know what you guys think there. And don't forget also uh, to tune in Monday nights, Wednesday nights for our weekly live streams. I'm usually on Mondays if I'm not too busy or I'll make, you know, might make it up on a Friday or something like that if I can't stream on Monday. And then Kaya you can talk with on Wednesdays, so feel free to tune in there. And we do stream to YouTube, Twitch, uh, X, formerly known as Twitter. Are, are we still all calling it Twitter? I, I, I'm still calling it Twitter, right? Until I'm told not to. Anyway, uh, and sometimes Facebook, but Facebook doesn't like us that much. So sometimes we have our page, sometimes we don't. But Rumble also. So like, comment, share, subscribe, all that type of fun stuff. And the last big important thing is if you haven't visited CF Contest this week, cfcontest.com, I highly suggest that you do because some of the guns that I've mentioned, well, quite a few of the guns that I've mentioned in today's conversation have been featured at the website if they're not currently being featured right now at cfcontest.com. So don't miss out on that, guys. As always, we appreciate you. God bless, and we'll see you next time at Classic Firearms.